When you think about nuclear weapons, what comes to your mind? Perhaps Kim Jong-un of North Korea? Donald Trump? Probably the discussions around Iran. And surely Cold War stuff. That is a long time ago, at least for our young people. But what do nuclear weapons have to do with you here in Germany today? In the next few minutes, I will hopefully convince you that indeed you should be concerned about nuclear weapons. You, as a student, a researcher, or broadly a citizen. Let's go back to 1995, where this photograph was taken. In 1995, the Russian missile warning system identified a rocket as a ballistic missile carrying nuclear weapons. And it was determined that this rocket was on a path from NATO country Norway to hit northern Russia. Within minutes, President Yeltsin was presented the briefcase through which he could authorize a nuclear attack to respond. And he only had a couple of minutes to decide whether he wanted to do that. And generally, a NATO surprise attack was generally not discarded at that point. Luckily, after discussing for several minutes, it appeared that the rocket would actually land beyond Russian territory and no strike was ordered. The reality, unknown to Yeltsin at that point, was that the rocket, whose launch you see on this picture, was nothing but a research rocket to study polar lights. It had nothing to do with nuclear weapons. Now, stop for a moment and think what could have been the consequences. A nuclear war, only by accident. So are we not as safe as many think? Studying the number of nuclear weapons that exist today does not allow for any comfort. Look at this chart. You can see that nuclear weapons are possessed by nine countries. Russia, the United States, France, China, Great Britain, Pakistan, India, Israel, and North Korea. And if you count all of these weapons together, you reach almost 14,000 nuclear weapons that still exist today. Now, think about that so far only two weapons have been used against populations. That's Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Think about the destruction that two weapons could cause. And then think about even about a small arsenal of nuclear weapons, like that of France or the United Kingdom. While the past decades have shown significant reductions in nuclear arsenals, the stocks during the Cold War were way higher. Such efforts have largely vanished. They have been replaced by nuclear weapon states modernizing their arsenals and even developing new nuclear weapon systems. This increases the instability. Well, the good news, according to deterrence theorists, is that nuclear weapons are actually not to be used. They are only there to deter attacks. If I can destroy you, you will not attack me. In theory, states for which the souls will not enter into war. And indeed, deterrence theorists say that it is nuclear weapons that ensured that there was no major war among superpowers during the Cold War. So according to them, nuclear weapons make the world a safer place. But, as you can imagine, there is also criticism of this thinking. There is no consensus on the role or importance of deterrence. For example, look at this cartoon, which shows, which exemplifies the skepticism of many in a sarcastic way. In any case, my point today is not to argue for or against deterrence. My point is instead that even if you buy into all the deterrence theory, you still cannot consider a world with nuclear weapons a safe world. After all, deterrence is only credible when there is a credible threat of somebody using nuclear weapons. If you tell me that you will annihilate me, but I actually don't believe you, 
then I'm not being deterred. So there must be scenarios where states would threaten the, uh, the use of nuclear weapons. And where this is on the table, there will be room for miscalculations and misjudgments. In fact, we know there have been several instances of near-nuclear use or sloppy practices around nuclear weapons since the end of the Cold War, beyond the incident I already mentioned. They have been documented by scholars like Patricia Lewis or Benoit Pilopidas. On 30th of August 2007, six nuclear-armed cruise missiles went missing in the United States for 36 hours. They had mistakenly been placed under the wings of a bomber, seen here, and nobody knew about those, not even the pilot of the bomber. There were no special guards at all to protect these weapons. The protocols that were in place that should have resulted in somebody discovering those weapons were not followed. The bomber flew across the United States before the weapons were eventually found. What does it show us? It shows us that the humans that are in charge can, and more importantly will, make errors. This and the weather rocket incidents are only two examples of nuclear vulnerability. There are further incidents that have been discovered. Likely, there are also further incidents that we don't know about, perhaps even many. Because after all, those incidents that have been discovered have usually been discovered by chance and not by governments deliberately making them public. Beyond human errors, think about cyber attacks on nuclear weapons command and control systems. Bruce Blair is a former US missile officer, so he knows what he's talking about. And he has reported that just in recent years, US command and control had several vulnerabilities. One, for instance, would have allowed a hacker to conduct a cyber attack that would have prevented nuclear weapons from being launched. And even if you consider this perhaps a good thing, in fact, it's deeply worrisome. Because Bruce Blair is afraid that a launch could also be set off by false early warning data that had been corrupted by hackers, or that a foreign agent could launch another country's missiles against a third party. So ultimately, the fact that no nuclear weapons exploded since the end of the Second World War is because we have been lucky. Incidents that could have resulted in a nuclear explosion did not. But you don't have to be an expert in statistics to understand that at some point we may run out of luck. Indeed, based on the past cases of near nuclear use, Scholars, such as Turing Award winner Martin Hellman, argue that the risk that nuclear weapons will explode within the next 100 years is high. Think about what this could mean for you and the next generation. Compared to this incredible threat, there is astonishingly little debate. During the Cold War, there was a very high level of awareness. This issue was debated among all of society. But since the end of the Cold War, the awareness has faded away. Apart from perhaps Iran and North Korea, you barely hear about this issue anymore. Compare this to the public engagement on climate change. Here, the public is well, very well informed and holds governments accountable. There is a massive research effort to understand the consequences of climate change and to come up with approaches of mitigation and adaptation. So then, who decides about our global nuclear future? Decisions are left to a few people in governments, mostly in nuclear weapon states. Take a look at this cartoon. It shows what at least some people in those governments seem to think innovation looks like. Does this look like innovation and fresh thinking to you? Certainly, it has not brought us very far. This is not to say that there are easy solutions, because there are not. And also, in those governments, there are people seeking change. But I'm sure we can try harder. So, why 
Is there such little engagement and effort when the threat is so large? Could one reason be that the public actually doesn't know about it, that it is not well informed? Let us look at polling data from Germany this year. How much do Germans know today? In this chart, you see again the nuclear weapon states. And what this chart shows to you is how many people aged between 18 and 50 years think that each of these states that you see there possesses nuclear weapons. So, as you see, most people do know about Russia, the United States, China, North Korea. They, even there, around 25% don't know that these states have nuclear weapons. But for five nuclear weapon states, including France and the United Kingdom, our direct neighbor countries, only between one-fourth and 40 percent that think that they have nuclear weapons. And look at Iran on the right. 40 percent think that Iran has nuclear weapons. And, of course, this is coming from all the discussions and all the media reports that we hear about Iran. Well, let me tell you, Iran does not possess nuclear weapons, and it has never possessed nuclear weapons. The discussions are only about stopping Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. Asked about the global stocks of nuclear weapons, only one in five gets it about right. And look at how far these estimates that you see here range. They range from fewer than 500, which 10% think, up to over than 100,000 nuclear weapons, which 15% think. And not even during the Cold War have the stocks been that high. It spends two orders of magnitude. So the lack of knowledge is very clear. How can one have a critical debate when knowledge is so limited? An important starting point to build momentum would therefore be to increase teaching about nuclear weapons issues in schools and universities. Especially the young generation must be enabled to act on this. But options to engage go far beyond teaching. If you're a student or a researcher in Aachen or elsewhere, you can contribute. You can contribute if you're a social scientist. But you can even contribute when you're a natural scientist or when you're doing technical work. This is not actually as abstract as you may think. There is concrete things that can be done. I'm a physicist and decided to pursue a career in this field because I am convinced that something had to be done. I work on the following challenge. Assume a country is telling the world how many nuclear weapons or materials that can be used for nuclear weapons it has. Would you trust that statement? Probably not. They may be deceiving you. But this information is actually very important for further disarmament efforts. Because, after all, are you as a state going to sign a disarmament agreement with another country if you don't know what they have? So this requires verification. There have to be tools and methods that allow us to assess whether such declarations are true. And verification is also required for another challenge. And that challenge is that perhaps a country is telling you that they're about to dismantle a couple of their warheads, and, but you want to know, is this actually true or not? So maybe you send inspectors in, and they are supposed to verify this. And they want to know, something that looks like a warhead, where a country is saying, well, this is the one that we're going to dismantle. Is it actually a warhead, or is it some other object while the state is actually keeping their real warhead somewhere else? After all, if you look at this picture here, and you look at that object there, do you think that's a warhead? Maybe it is. It kind of looks like a warhead, doesn't it? Maybe it's not a warhead. And even experts will not be able to tell by looking at this picture. The problem is that a state will never allow an inspector to just measure whatever they want to gain confidence that this is a warhead, because after all, there is a lot of secrecy involved. But you can actually do technical work, as I alluded to. So this system here is a system that I helped develop together with colleagues that is actually taking measurements and that is actually telling you, by means of a green or red light, whether you see a warhead or not but you don't see any information that you're not allowed to see. 
don't get me wrong. All of you can do something. You don't have to be a researcher. Don't be like these people here, sitting, enjoying, watching. What are they watching, by the way? It's a nuclear weapon test. It's time to change the conversation. We need public awareness and debate. We need innovation. What is the nuclear future we as a society want? Do nuclear weapons increase our security, or do they decrease it? Germany subscribes to vision of a world free of nuclear weapons, yet we host United States weapons on our territory that the German army would eventually fly. So, what does society want Germany to do? Talk with your friends, your neighbors, your parents or kids. Join an organization that engages on nuclear weapons issues or get in touch with us here in Aachen. Let us spread the word and act.